Hi everyone, it's Margaret here with 60 and Me. A uh, topic today that I want to chat with you about is living alone. Now I do live by myself. Oh, I just realized I had my glasses on. Um, I live by myself and probably many of you do too. We talk about it quite a bit here on 60 and Me, and um, I would think there's some definite advantages and I want to um, just discuss those with you and see whether they resonate with, with your experience. But I think that there are 10 at least benefits to living by yourself as an older woman. So the first thing of course is independence. Independence. And that's independence to and independence from. And the independence to is to do anything that you like. I mean, honestly, you can get up in the middle of the night, three o'clock, have a cup of tea and a cookie, and no one's going to be like, what are you doing? <laughs> it's, you know, you are totally doing your own thing. Now, of course, this requires a little bit of, um, what's the word, like a little self-control, a little bit of discipline, perhaps, so you don't go too crazy. But, you know, no, I mean, independence to wear what you want, you know, to travel the way that you like, to think the way that you want to. You know, you're not having constant, I mean, not that you're not having friendships and, and dialogues that, you know, stimulate difference, but, um, you know, you can really live your life the way that you want independently and, and with freedom. I mean, maybe that's the, the word that a lot of people might use. The other thing is freedom or independence from, and that's independence from, you know, requirements and, rec and you know, um, things that you feel are obligations. I mean, maybe you've had a life filled with, you know, working, I mean, if you're divorced now or you've, you've lost a partner and you're, you know, remembering the things that you used to have to do to accommodate, um, you know, the, the, their personalities or their situation. And, you know, you're just not free from that now. And I know that sometimes it's filled with a lot of sadness and, um, you know, ad adapting to a new, a new lifestyle. But, um, you know, it is independence from those kinds of uh, conditions and judgments judgment and um, what well, you know you can fill in all the words freedom and uh, independence to do things and be free from things the next thing is personal space you can have your own personal space. You can do what you like. You can put your sofa there or there. You can, you know, you can cook whatever meals you like. You can just create a space that's you. And, you know, as you get older, I think we start, I mean, I know I look around my place and there's just rhythms and uh, styles and things that repeat themselves because I love them. I love like, for example, floral, dark floral, moody, like black, black, um, uh, moody florals. And I have them on cushions. I have them on my tabletop. So I have them in little, you know, boxes. Um, I actually, it's funny, actually, I wear so many plain clothes, you know, things without any um, pattern on them. But my house has got these little decorative and um, pieces. And I, I just love that d d design idea, my personal space. I just have put things where I can find them and where I want them to be. And my personal space reflects me. I was thinking about that this morning about how, you know, we're all so different and how being by myself has given me the freedom to really explore and, and you know, evolve that person. The next thing is um, control over the home environment. <laughs> I'm laughing because uh, I remember when I went on a cruise with my friend Kathleen, she was like always turning the heat down and I was always turning the heat up. And it was like, ah, um, I'm, I'm cold, I'm hot. And um, you know, so controlling your environment <laughs> is definitely a plus. You can have the temperature any way you like. You can have the windows open, you can have them closed, whatever you want. And you know, you've got your own living space that you can design and um, you know, have comfort. And Kathleen was, was right, it was too warm, but you know, she's, it's, it's all good. We just don't have to think about that when you're living by yourself flexibility and maybe this is related that you are not dependent on an agenda of someone else like they're not getting up at a certain time or leaving or you know asking you to do certain things I mean you're kind of um, flexible to just lie in bed in your pajamas all day if you want to um, you know, and you know or you can do whatever you like I mean your, your flexibility with the, like the way you dress the way that you act the way that you can dance around the living room without any clothes on if you want just make, well, I was going to say, just make sure you, your curtains are, are, are closed, but who cares? I mean, it, it's okay. But um, the point is that you can do whatever you like. You can be flexible in your lifestyle and in the choice of things that you surround yourself with. The food, the, 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 the home decor, all those things we talked about. And your social activities. You can do what you like, come in from a movie late, go, you know, go out, out early in the morning if you're traveling. You've got flexibility to not just be upsetting or bothering any other person. You can just do what you like. I think I've said that 10 times. Um, peace and quiet. Now, I, I don't know whether any, well, many of you have grandchildren, many of you probably have children that you, uh, over the years, you know, you woke up in the morning to 15 teenagers, or not five, f three teenagers lying on your sofa, having spent the night at your house. And, you know, uh, it wasn't the quietest time in my life. I, I actually, to be honest, I loved it. I did love having people in my house. Um, and maybe that's something that under, 
weaves into this whole conversation that yes we've got freedom of living alone but it was it was fun wasn't it i mean let's admit it <laughs> there were moments that you absolutely loved and adored having a lot of noise and music my one of my uh, family really loves uh, music and it was always they were always playing uh, incredible uh, the latest and greatest music and i loved it i felt when they left home i actually really <laughs> lost my lost touch with music i could not tell you right now what is like in the charts at all <laughs> but anyway you get the idea um a reduced conflicts maybe that's re that's peace and quiet taken to the next level um you know we live with people and there's always double triple personality overlapping and uh, things going on that you know you have no control over and um you know i think when you live by yourself you know, you can have just create more, less tension, less arguing, less disagreement because you're, well, I mean, you can always disagree with yourself. I do that. <laughs> and you can always argue with yourself. Um, sometimes I go like the whole day only talking on video to, to you guys. And then I start talking to myself and it's like, it's a very different conversation. But anyway, the point, you know, I'm making is that you don't have to have any disagreements with someone if they're not there. And so living alone is definitely, um, you've got it's advantages when it comes to that. Um, I think that the time, the next couple of uh, topics are, are, are very personal. And um, I think that as we get older, as we get into our 60s and 70s and 80s, uh, these issues become a little teeny bit more uh, important. First of all, reflecting and self-awareness. Uh, I, I used to do this check-in every birthday where I would kind of go through my whole life and think about all the things I'd done and uh, all the people and the, and the lessons learned. And then um, I'm doing it more regularly now. I, I really do honestly find myself uh, you know, talking about or thinking about uh, things that I've done in the past, how that fits together, you know, in where I am today, um, how I'm keep looking at that picture um, behind me for, because that really, in a way, reflects so, so much of my past because I bought that when I was married and um, I don't know, like it's just, it just reminds me of, of, of that time and that self-awareness of being able to associate people or things in your house, things that you've surrounded yourself with, with things that that mean meant a lot to you, and gaining that self awareness for um, you know just becoming who you are and and feeling good about that, letting go of some of the ghosts and some of the you know the things that you don't need to have in your life anymore, letting go of the memories, letting like downsizing even I suppose is part of that self awareness, and so from that I think comes another I think it's the eighth one of giving you an opportunity for personal growth. And if you want to do yoga in the morning, you want to meditate, you want to um, take yourself to the next level in terms of your understanding of yourself, um, I think it's a really powerful thing for that. And in a way, it lets you take on additional responsibilities. It lets you take, I mean, I did a video recently, which um, I, I really felt good about in, in my heart, but a couple of people questioned it. But I did this um, video about things that you let go when you get older. And for me, it was just in a way, a little joking comment that I'm getting, letting my eyebrows go and I'm letting my you know beautiful skin and my long luminous hair. Um, and I'm actually now focusing on the things that are going to take me forward and take my grandkids forward and to do things for the next generation that can be helpful and um, so for me that was kind of the personal growth um, aspect of it that I'm moving beyond myself and thinking about others and thinking about things I can contribute to the world not to say that you know I'm not you know, doing things to, to keep a positive um, you know um, aspect to all everything else I mentioned but you know it was just that kind of movement from self-absorption to going out into the world and trying to make a difference and being there as a mentor and a support um, sense of accomplishment I guess that's the last one where you feel like you've actually um, done something you know you've got a legacy that you can live you know, through that you, you've, you've left something there for your grandkids and you, <clears throat> I've got one more, I've got my, I know I have my glasses on now because I can't read. <laughs> I can't, <clears throat> and I think the last one I had written down here was to make decisions. We all make decisions when we get older, don't we? And it's time to, you know, to do that. And living alone, I think gives you some space. It gives you some strength and um, I'm, I'm just happy that I'm here to share it with you and to be with you on your journey. It's fun. It's, it's, a, it's a good journey. We're, we're, we're lucky to have each other. So take good care of yourselves. If you like this video, please do me a favor and like it. Put, just press that little thumbs up because um, then YouTube will share it with other people. 
And then also, if you'd like to join our Patreon group, I talk about this often. It's a supporters group for 60 and Me. And it's a, enable, it's a way of uh, helping to fund and support 60 and Me. We don't charge anything for all of our content and videos, but also we do exclusive videos. We do uh, live shows twice a week, which is really cool because people come together and chat in a more intimate way. And, and also we do some trips and other things that you might be interested in. So it's Patreon. I'll put the details there in the, underneath the video. So have a wonderful day, everybody. Take care of yourselves. I know that you're loved and respected here, that we're on this journey together, and I appreciate you so, so much. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.